Hi, I'm Heather from Heather Handmade, and today I'm going to teach you how to make these really cute bunny baskets. So I first made these baskets for a book tour five years ago, and I have I don't have the book anymore, and this is um, the baskets I originally took pictures of. At the time, I had two kids. Then I had another kid, and without the book, I made up this one, so I made this one to match so that my daughter would have one more. I've finally made up my own measurements and tutorial so that you can make your own bunny basket with cute ears and a cute little face. It's great if you want to um, gather things for Easter or maybe just decorate for spring. Let's get started. What you need to get started is a solid color canvas fabric, something heavier that would work well for the outside. You need it to be pretty sturdy, not because it's going to be washed a lot, but because you want the box to have shape. And then um, some lining fabric. I've used both flannel and quilting cotton and have had great luck with both of those. You need some uh, medium weight interfacing to help um, the canvas be strong and stand up. Then I like to use felt or leather for the bunnies, um, like the nose, the teeth, so that it won't fray. That's why I use felt. And then I have two blue buttons for an eye and a pink button for the nose. I'm also using a clear ruler, a cutting mat, and a rotary cutter to cut out all the pieces. I'm going to cut out the canvas first. So my box is going to be six by six by six. So I need fabric that's going to be 18 inches by 18 inches. So first, I'm going to just get rid of the edge. I am ripping because it's faster and you get a really clean cut. And then I get out to Eighteen inches out here. So now that my fabric is cut eighteen inches by eighteen inches, I need to cut squares out of each corner. So instead of doing those individually, I am going to cut it all at the same time. So I'm folding it in half and I'm lining up my corners and then I'm folding it in half again, like this, so that right here, this is where the center of the fabric is, and these are my raw edges. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut squares out of the corner, and since I want it to be finished, six inches, I'm going to cut squares that are five and a half. So when I open up this, you can see that I have, you know, my four sides and my center. Now with my remaining fabric, I'm going to cut four ears and two straps. So the straps are four inches by 12 inches. Now I'm going to cut the ears and they are three inches by eight inches. have my four layers of fabric that will become the ears and this is just a simple rectangle. I'm going to make it a point at the top so that it looks more like an ear and I'm actually just freehanding this. Now we are going to cut the lining fabric the same way that we cut the basket, the outer fabric. Now we are going to cut some interfacing 
for a lot of the pieces to make it um, stronger and more firm. So each ear is going to get interfacing and each strap is going to get interfacing. And then I'm also going to interface the outside fabric and I'm going to interface the lining and that will give um, the box the right shape and structure. So now I'm going to cut the face. So the teeth are just like a small rectangle. So I'm doing the rectangle is one inch by three quarters of an inch. And that's a little tall for teeth, but I want part of it to be under the front of the face. And then for the face, I'm going to cut two circles that are two inches by two inches. And then I'm going to round the corners. You can use something to help you measure if you want. I like to freehand just because it looks a little more organic and real instead of, you know, perfect. After the interfacing is cut, you can fuse all of the interfacing to the wrong side of the canvas and also the boxes, you know, like the lining and the boxes. I've already interfaced these. So now we are going to sew these ears right sides together. So I'm going to pin two of them together like this. For the straps, you're going to press it in half like this. And then you're going to bring each side in to meet that in the middle. And then press it again like this. For the lining and the outside, you're going to do it the same way where we are going to line up each corner, each side. So we're going to pin this so that we can sew along this to make the four corners of the box. After you have these seams sewn, then press them open with an iron so that you get a really nice crisp seam. So you're going to take these ears and we are going to grade, we are going to trim all of the corners and curves so it's not so bulky at the tip of the ear and right at that curve. Next you're going to turn these ears right side out and um, poke out that tip so that it's a nice pointy tip and then press it flat. Now that we have our box done, we are going to pin on our face. We're going to pin on the ears 
and we are going to pin on the straps so that we can baste it in place before we sew the lining to the box. I'm going to use white thread and go around both cheeks. I'll go around the teeth and then I'm going to sew a line down the middle to do to make it look like two separate teeth. Then I'm going to pin my ears to the top and I am going to fold the outer edge of the ear in and I'm doing about a third so if I were to divide this into thirds I'm folding it in one third so if you see that's one ear and that's the other ear but since actually they're gonna be like this you want the pleat you want the ear to open this way but since we have to have the raw edges together you're going to fold your ears down like this and pin these on Then you're going to take the strap and put it on the side lining up the top like this so I'm putting it evenly between each side like this and I'm going to pin it on Everything has been basted and sewn in place. I am going to slip my lining over my basket. My lining is right side in and my basket is right side out so that I make sure I line up um, right sides together. And I am going to match up and pin each corner. Making sure that everything is in the right place. So I recommend when you sew, you're going to sew 3 eighths from the edge all the way around this top, but you're going to need to leave a gap to turn the basket right side out. So I'm going to use the back. This is the side that doesn't have any straps or bunny ears, and I'm going to so past this seam on each side and then I'm going to leave about a four inch gap and back stitch on each side so that I can turn it right side out but my stitches won't come out because the back stitch will hold it in place. turning the basket right side out and stuffing the lining down inside. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch around the top of the basket with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and that will actually just close this hole. If you fold that seam allowance in like this then when you top stitch it it will just so that hole closed. The very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sewing machine to sew on these buttons. These are the eyes and this is the nose. And I prefer to do the buttons on the basket at the very end because I like to it, I like that it holds the lining in place. If you don't want to see any stitching on the back, then put your buttons on before you um, add sew the lining on. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you had fun learning how to make a handmade bunny face basket. 
If you make one, please share it with me on social media so I can see. I hope you have a wonderful day.